Hello and welcome to this new FreeCAD tutorial here on the FreeCAD Academy. The simple part with part design. That's a tutorial officially released in the FreeCAD documentation in the FreeCAD wiki. To give you some extra value from this video, I will divide this video into two parts. In the first part, I will model the tutorial exactly as it's in the documentation. I will do all the steps that are described there. Then I will show why, in my opinion, this is not the optimal way of modeling a part in FreeCAD. You should have heard of the topological naming problem or topo naming and the techniques used in the tutorial in the documentation don't take care of this problem and so we will have some issues. So I developed a workflow that's more stable considering the topo naming problem and I will compare these workflows. Let's model the part according to the documentation. FreeCAD 19, new file, part design workbench, create a new body, create a sketch, create the sketch on the XZ plane, and then let's start drawing. As you know, I like to drag and drop a little bit to the bottom left to have more space for my drawing. I start with the um, polyline tool. make a little vertical line, an angled line, a horizontal line, then polyline extra power, triple M on the keyboard to make it an arc, go down a little bit and close the shape. Right click to quit the command. First thing I'd like to do is to fix the corner point here onto my sketch origin point by using the coincident constraint. Let's have a look which other geometric constraints are missing. This line here is vertical, but not in my sketch. As you can see, I can drag and drop this line and it will not stay vertical. So we have to select it, select the vertical constraint and that's it. Let's continue with Dimensioning, we have 50 millimeters from this point to this point in vertical distance. And in horizontal distance as well. Everything according to the original. We have a total length of 100 millimeters down here. We have the radius of 20 millimeters up here. And then there is still one degree of freedom left. And that's, for example, the angle of this line. So let's select these two lines here, angle 30 degrees, fix this little dimension a little bit, make it better visible for you. And then the sketch is complete close that. Now I'm back in the part design environment. Sketch is still selected. So I can select the pad command here from the tasks menu. 30 millimeters. Okay. So that was the easy part of the tutorial. We need to make a hole in the middle of this face here. The first suggestion from the original tutorial is to select this face and click on new sketch. Caution, this is something I do not recommend, placing sketches directly on faces, as you might know from my other videos. But I will do it now because it's shown in the original tutorial. So the next step in the original tutorial is to link these two edges here from the 3D body. To make it better visible, I press and rotate in my sketch so I can see the 3D body. I click on create an edge link to an external geometry. I link these edges here. That's another thing I do not recommend doing. And then I create two lines, make them construction lines from this point to this point here. Another line from this point to this point here. Make sure the point is 
properly selected, then you will see a cross here. Switch over to the sketch geometry, create a circle that's fixed on this line, for example, make it 10 millimeters in diameter. And now the last thing we need to do, we also need to fix the center point of this circle to the other line here. And now it's fixed in the middle. Close, pocket, through the whole body, and that's cool. That's the method shown in the original tutorial in the wiki. And if you're an experienced viewer here on my channel, you will know that this style of modeling is very dangerous in FreeCAD, so watch out. So let's break the model. It's pretty simple to break it. All we need to do is to enter the first sketch here. This basic shape. And why not change this radius here and instead make a chamfer. So we can set this radius to construction and close the now no longer closed shape with a chamfer. Something like that. So now we no longer have this radius here, but a flat surface. On this side, I close. This one is still working pretty good. So I have not broken it yet. The two correct edges are still linked. Therefore, we need to change sketch number one a little more. We make a little radius here. Constraint preserving fillet. Set the fillet, for example, to 10 millimeter. The angle somehow disappeared, so we have to set it again, 30 degrees. And that's it. So let's close it and see what happens. Yep, not so funny. As you see, now the drill here left its original face on the top of the model and is now located here. When we enter the sketch, you will see that the sketch is no longer fixed on this face here, but on this. Let's go back. Go back to sketch number one. Let's put this line to construction mode and this line to the regular mode. See what happens now. Now the drill is placed on this face here, so it's somewhere completely different. So no matter what we do, whenever we change or even make small changes to our original geometry, something really weird is going to happen there. So that's another good example for the topological naming problem and a good example why I do not recommend this style of working. So next part of the video, how can we fix it? The first thing I need to know, I delete the complete pocket and I leave this complete sketch here. Um, this is not optimal for me. I delete the sketch. Now I enter the first sketch. Um, I make it look like the original sketch again. This is a little bit of work to do for me, but not too hard. I connect these two points again. I have the radius 100, 50, 50, 30. Everything is very fine now still. Padding of the first sketch. I would not have padded 30 millimeters in Y direction. I would have said symmetric to plane because it's a symmetric part. And working symmetric is always very welcome for these parts. Okay, and now we still have to make the hole there on this surface. As I told you, we do not select 3D surfaces for sketch placement. So we have to find a different method. And my favorite method is going with parameters. I open the sketch and this parameter here that's defining the height of the whole model, double click, name, optional name, I name it Z underline total. And then we need to take care of the 
placement of the hole and the hole is always located here in the middle of this line here. So I draw in a construction line, go to construction mode, new line. From here down here, select it, make it vertical, very important. And then I need to say that these two points and this line are symmetric. So I have now this little construction line here in the middle of the face. And now I need to have the distance from this point to the sketches origin. So I select a horizontal distance. The sketch is already fully constrained, so we cannot define any more driving constraints. Be careful. So we need to select these two points. And before we kill the sketch, we have to select reference because this is only a reference dimension. This is not a driving dimension. So, and now let's call it Z underscore hole. Okay. And okay, close it. Next thing to do is create a sketch. I make the XY plane. Okay. I enter the section view and I draw a circle that's fixed here on the horizontal axis. Diameter 10 millimeters. And now I need the distance from this point here to the sketch's origin point. I select both. I go to horizontal distance. Now I don't enter a length, but I click here on the formula editor. Now I'm in the formula editor. I can access the Z hole parameter that I defined in the other sketch. I enter the brackets sketch dot constraints dot Z underscore hole. We see 65 millimeters displayed here as the result. Okay. Okay. Now it's in pink color. So that means that this is a reference dimension. Very nice. Close. Now we still have one problem. The sketch is down here on the bottom. Um, I would like to have the sketch on the upside here of my part. Therefore I select sketch number 001. Let's rename it. It's, I don't like this. I call it sketch hole and the other sketch is now renamed to sketch profile. Okay, so let's continue. I select the sketch hole. I look down here in the properties of the sketch attachment position and in Z direction, I, s I go to the formula editor again. In the formula editor, I now can access the new name sketch, sketch profile, constraints, and now it's Z underline total because that was the name that I gave the total value of Z. And as you see, the sketch is now located on top of my geometry and I can use the sketch for a pocket command here through the whole body. Okay, that's cool. That's working, but I don't know if it has an advantage yet because I haven't tested if it's stable towards the topological naming problem. So I have to do weird things in the sketch profile and change it. So the first thing I did was to change this one here to a construction line and fill in here um, a line. Let's make it a little bit more confusing this time. We go with the poly line and why not entering even more lines, so something like that. Let's give an angle here, 135 degrees. And we have one degree of freedom left. So let's give a dimension from here to here. 
of 12 millimeters. Now the, the shape is going to look very transformed, but we don't care. All we want is that the hole is still in the right position, right? So let's close it and it looks pretty stable to me. So let's change it even further, the sketch profile. Now we get really crazy. We select this point here to make a constraint preserving sketch fillet on this point here. Watch out, the angle was deleted again to set the correct angle here, 30, mil 30 degrees. I always want to say 30 millimeters. And let's define a crazy radius of 20 millimeters. Close it. And still the pocket here is not affected. It's in the right place. It's still working very well. So let's set the tip to the pad. Set tip. So we are in the construction history. We are at this point. And we even change worse things. We select these two edges here and create a 3D fillet, filleting on edges, seven millimeters. And now let's change the tip again to the pocket, set tip. And it still looks like it's still working correctly, even when we place the fillet in the modeling history before this pocket here. These are all things that would kill models that are vulnerable to the topological naming. And now let's do one last thing. So let's further change some values here. 25 degrees, um, 40 millimeters, and five, and 120 degrees and the total length of 100 and maybe 20. So now we change it a lot in the model. Let's close and see what happens. The hole in this face here is still in the perfect position. We can even change the dimension of the first pad, make it wider, but the hole is still fixed in place here. In this I hope this was a good proof to you that this model is rock solid stable I hope you enjoyed the video I hope you see some extra value for you in this video compared to the original tutorial in the wiki I hope you had a good time here in the FreeCAD Academy stay safe and see you next time goodbye my friends